plan. There was a series of indicative votes last night, eight different ways of leaving the EU, all rejected. Well, Theresa May told Conservative MPs that she will step down if her Brexit deal gets voted through, as and when it's tabled for a third time. The DUP have said that they remain opposed to it, but leading Brexiteer Boris Johnson has said that he is now willing to vote in favour. Uh, well, let's get the views now of pro-Leave Conservative MP and member of the European Research Group, Mark Francois, looking very relaxed this morning. You don't see him at all troubled by what went on in the House of Commons last night. Um, what do we think? Theresa May's vote coming back for a third time? Would you vote for it? No. And uh, I think, you know, after the utter shambles of last night. And remember, this whole process was put together by MPs like Oliver Letwin and Dominic Grieve, who've never wanted to leave the European Union. And so they've basically trying to use parliamentary tricks and motions in order to stop us leaving the EU, despite the fact that 17.4 million British people voted for it. And what happened last night was they got caught out because the Commons spent a day debating these options and then didn't vote for any of them. We'd all been told, you know, something was bound to go through, there was a massive majority in the Commons against leaving. Well, when we actually had the votes, that all proved to be a false fear. So we're now on track to leave on the 12th of April 2019, and my argument is simple. The British people voted to leave the European Union. Let's just leave. Would anything make you vote for the Prime Minister's deal? I mean, she's offered her resignation. There's not much more she can give. That was enough for Boris Johnson, who might have leadership ambitions in mind, it has to be said. Jacob Rees-Mogg wavering. Anything she can say that, that can get you to back her deal and get us to the next stage of the Brexit negotiations? No, because I've read it. The deal is a draft international treaty. If we approve it, we'll be bound for it, by it forever in international law. And when you read the detail of the treaty, what it tells you is that we would still be in key areas of our law under the control of the European Court of Justice. It tells you that if we go into the backstop, then we would effectively be in a customs union, can't control our trade policy, can't do international trade deals with America or China or whoever. We pay £39 billion to the European Union for sweet Felicity Arkwright in return. The Telegraph went through the 585-page treaty with a fine tooth comb and described it, their words, okay. as a surrender document. And I'm not going to vote to surrender to anybody. Yeah. OK, uh, we've been through it, through it with a fine tooth comb yourself. And as you said, no, you will not be backing it. Um, but are the ERG split on this? We were hearing last night that the whip Steve Baker told the meeting last night, obviously the, the Prime Minister announced her resignation uh, after, if that deal goes through last night. Uh, Steve Baker said, I could tear this place down and bulldoze it into the river. These fools and knaves and cowards are voting on things they don't even understand. I may yet resign the whip and then be part of this. He said he was consumed with a ferocious, ferocious rage at this pantomime. Do you recognise this rage? Well, I was in the meeting. Steve gave an extremely emotional speech. He received a standing ovation. Uh, <clears throat> he basically said he wasn't going to put up with this. The, the whole 1922 committee was a, a total setup. I mean, it usually is, to be fair. And he was very annoyed by that. And I don't think Steve is going to be voting for the deal. Jacob Rees-Mogg, our chairman, has said, and Jacob's an honourable man. Whatever people think of Jacob, I've known him for years. If he gives his word, he keeps it. So he's the chairman of the ERG. He said if the DUP won't vote for it, neither will he. And they've made as plain as a pike staff last night they're not going to vote for it. So Jacob won't vote for it. Steve's the deputy chairman. He's not going to vote for it. And I'm the vice chairman, and I'm not going to vote for it. For it. So the three officers of the ERG have all said they're not going to vote for the so, deal. So, so what do we do now then? Because there's not a majority for any of the MPs' choices. We found that out last night. Some of the more popular options were for a softer Brexit, things like the customs union, a second referendum on any Brexit no, 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 deal. No, no, with, with so where does this leave us? Well, the second referendum was defeated last night. Even though the cabinet it was a close run thing. It was only just, I think it was eight votes in it. So, you know, everything was defeated, but that was the closest run. Well, but the cabinet abstained. I think if the cabinet had voted, it would have been defeated by more. And in addition, we voted on a second referendum as well last week on something um, called the Wollaston Amendment. That was defeated as well. So a second referendum has now been defeated twice in the House of Commons in barely a week. 
So I don't think that's going to happen because you could might have... come back again on Monday, though, is one of the, one of the more popular options. So why can't the Prime Minister's deal come back for a third time? Well, <clears throat> that's up to the Speaker. That's not a decision for me. I'm not frightened to vote again on the Prime Minister's deal, although I just make the point that nothing has changed, not yeah. one punctuation mark in the treaty has altered. Okay. So we are voting again on the same thing. But if okay. it comes back, I'm happy to vote it down again. OK. And um, it's interesting because the Prime Minister said, back my deal and you'll get a new Prime Minister. And I just wonder if some of the ERG members might think, OK, maybe we will change our minds because we'll get a new Prime Minister. And you might get a Brexiteer Prime Minister, somebody that's more attuned to your idea of Brexit, dominant Nick Raab, for example. So is that not worth a price worth paying to get to the next stage of negotiations and have someone who has your way of thinking carving the way ahead in stage two? Now, I'm not voting on this deal on the basis of who or who is not the Prime Minister. I'm voting on the deal on the basis of what is in the treaty. And if we sign the treaty, if we ratify the treaty, we are bound forever in international law. That's why it's an international treaty. And if you sign up to something which is rancid and you can then never get out of it, it doesn't matter who the Prime Minister is because you've sold the pass. OK, Mark Francois, good to talk. We'll let you get back to your cup of tea before it goes cold. Uh, Mark Francois.